Welcome to this skeletal structure video where we are having a look at our scapula and learning how to name and distinguish all the features associated with it. Like we always do, let's start with our directional terminology here first. So we're going to have the scapula viewed from its anterior aspect as if we were looking from the front of the body and also the posterior aspect as if we were looking from behind. In addition to the anterior and posterior, I'll just put here medial, so closer to the midline of the body, and lateral, so on the outer surface. Now on the lateral is where we're going to have our shoulder joint, here and here. And the other name for our uh, scapula is our shoulder blade, and you've probably heard that term many times before. So your shoulder blade is your scapula bone. Kicking it off right away here, the first structure I've highlighted in pink is our acromion. And the acromion is a large prominence on the lateral edge of the scapula and forms part of the scapula spine. So it's the lateral surface of the scapula spine. And together with the coracoid process, which I will discuss in a minute, it helps form part of our glenohumeral or shoulder joint. It will also articulate with the anterior side uh, of our clavicle, which is your collarbone. Now, just while we're talking about the spine of the scapula and the acromion being the end part of it, let's just uh, finish off this spine here. So we've got that spine in green, and it's going to be a point of tendon attachment for uh, several muscles. And it's also going to help form the fossas of our scapula that are going to be on the posterior surface, so on the back side of that bone. So it's going to help form a fossa here inferiorly and here superiorly. And in the pale pink, I've just highlighted the superior fossa, superior to the spine, so we're going to call it the supraspinous fossa. And that's also going to be a point of tendon attachment for our muscles that's above the spine of the scapula. Below the spine in the light blue, I've just highlighted the infraspinous fossa. Once again, infra, abbreviation for inferior, and spinous referring to the spine of the scapula. Once again, for tendon attachment. If we move on now to the next portion of our scapula, which helps to form part of that shoulder joint as well, we have the coracoid process. I've highlighted the anterior and posterior portions of the coracoid process on the scapula there. There is going to be some tendon attachment, and it's also going to help stabilize your shoulder joint along with the acromion. So the acromion and the coracoid process are extending out over that shoulder joint capsule. The next structure we're going to have a look at here, I'll point out with an arrow so we can see it a bit better, and it's called the suprascapular notch. So we've got the suprascapular notch here on the anterior side, and we can see it from the posterior as well. And it's going to be the point of the body where the suprascapular nerve will pass through. Now, on some people, this uh, suprascapular notch may be a vastly different shape and may even be absent. But that notch there is just a point where nerve will pass through. The last large fossa that we will see on the scapula is the subscapular fossa. So it's going to be on the anterior surface of that bone, so closest to the front of the body. So just behind our rib cage. Now this subscapular fossa is also a tendon attachment point for our subscapular muscle. So that's what's going to be there. Now with the scapula, lots of people get confused with uh, which way it's facing, where's anterior and where's posterior. So there are names for all of the borders that you should familiarize yourself with as well the first of which being the lateral border of the scapula, which I'm just outlining here. So that long lateral surface. 
and we'll also have a medial border to the scapula. So the medial border being here and on the posterior as well. Just keeping in mind that we're going through these really quickly because all they refer to is just your directional terminology and helping you orient yourself. So we have the superior angle on the top. We can see from the anterior and posterior. We'll also have an inferior angle, which we'll see from the bottom. You probably already know where the inferior angle is going to be, right here and right here from our posterior. We'll also have a superior border, which is just going to be below our superior angle. So we can see the superior border here of the scapula. And our last one is going to be the lateral angle. Now the lateral angle is leading into our glenoid cavity. So lateral angle here. And with that, we'll point out our glenoid cavity. The glenoid cavity being the depression in the bone where we're going to uh, fit uh, the head of our humerus. So the head of the humerus is going to fit in here and help to form our glenohumeral joint that's going to interact with our coracoid process and the acromion. So the ball-shaped head of the humerus will interact with all three of those structures of the scapula to form the glenohumeral joint or our shoulder joint. And that's all of the features of our scapula that we need to be aware of. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.